A while back I attempted the impossible, to survive 300 rounds on cornfield without removing any corn. We failed that challenge. Today we descend into hell and attempt to survive 300 rounds on the expert map Infernal. Stick around. This map presents a very interesting challenge. Playing the map as is reminds of the cornfield challenge, because you still have very limited space to work with. Compared to the cornfield challenge, you have more visible track length and more buildable space on Infernal. But of course, most of that space is in bad spots in relation to the track, and also on Infernal you have two tracks instead of just one. In our cornfield challenge, we first attempted it using Adora as our hero, and we managed to create a true sun god without removing any corn. But even when using Adora's ability, it was not enough to take down a fortified bad, and there's not enough room to create a VTHG without removing any corn. So we switched our hero to Isili and managed to get into the 260s. On Infernal, if you place your towers well, you can just about manage to get a Vengeful. So in this run, we will be using Adora. Another thing that enables us to do this is the fact that we have more space to farm. In the early game, we want to get our farms up and running as soon as possible, which is why you saw me intentionally leak a lot of lives early on. After that, a bottom pass sniper is going to be our main DPS tower, while we build several boat farms that will make us money and also help out clearing out some rounds. You can just about fit three boats in the bottom left water, but doing so in the top right proved to be more difficult for some reason. At round 40, we upgrade the sniper's bottom path to tier 3 and get an alchemist, and then continue upgrading our boats until we have 4 merchantmen and 1 trade empire. We make sure that our trade empire is in the bottom left, because our VTSG will be in the top center, and we do not want the trade empire to get sacrificed. The bottom left boats will all be used to create the boat paragon, and each dollar generated by the boats counts as 4 pops and will increase the degree of our paragon. After that, we will get 4 jungle bounty druids, two besides each farm, and use their abilities to generate more cash, and also continue upgrading our farms. We also get working on our middle path snipers, whose abilities will also generate more cash. As soon as you get your first farm to tier 4, you want to build two overclocks and constantly overclock the farms to increase the cash generated. On round 57, we will place Adora in the top left corner. This ensures that she will be in the range to get the transformation from the VTSG, and by placing her now, she will just about have time to get to level 20 before we get the VTSG, which is also a requirement for the transformation to take place. After getting the Elite Sniper, we can focus on getting our tier 5 farms. We will get the Banana Central first, and then after saving up some cash, we will sell the top path tier 4 and get the bottom path tier 5 instead. Reason being is that the Monkey Wall Street and Central Markets increase the money generation by the Merchantman by 10%, and as mentioned, this counts as pops towards the Paragon degree. And then we will fill the map with more middle path snipers for more cash generation, and upgrade our alchemist to tier 4. We will also upgrade one of our jungle bounty druids to the spirit of the forest to get some extra DPS and increase the cash generation from the ability. On round 95, DDTs become a problem, so now we will get our sun temple. The temple does not have camo detection yet, so we will use a signal flare mortar to decamo the DDTs for now, and then we continue farming. On round 107, we have enough money for the VTSG after selling our farms. Adora got the transformation, but for some reason not into the vengeful version, a glitch I've never seen before. But it does not matter, as for Adora, the different transformations does the same amount of damage, it's just a visual difference. Now we will need to start moving some towers around. 
We start by moving a door away from the VTSG so that we will be able to place a village here for the extra attack speed and camo detection. In order for the village to reach the VTSG, we need to make it a 5-2-0 village, and we can't afford that just yet. So to deal with the DDTs on round 110, we target the cleansing foam from the overclocks to as early as possible on the track. Or alternatively, place the village anyway and upgrade it into an X2X to at least give the vengeful Minison avatars camo detection, and let them handle the DDTs. And now, we will get back to farming for a good while. We'll get an ultra boost and use it on the farms, the VTSG and Adora. We'll also get a Grand Sabo and use its ability constantly to start farming pops for the Ninja Paragon. On round 147, we got our degree 20 nav arc. We then build our support temple and continue farming and gaining pops for the ninja and the boomerangs while we're ultra boosting our temple. On round 189 we get our degree 56 ascended shadow. We then place a 500 boat in the top right and build a permabrew for the VTSG which we will later move around to permabrew every tower we get. We will later sell and rebuy the boat on the other side of the map. Then we'll get a Sentry Champion, an XXXL Trap, to start farming pops for our Engineer Paragon, and a Flying Fortress to farm pops for our Ace Paragon. We'll get a Degree 42 Glaive Dominus, and a Degree 30 Master Builder on round 222, and then a Degree 69 Goliath Doomship on round 231. To finish the setup, we get a Cripple Moab, BMA, Grand Sabo, Mad, Glue Storm, Ultra Boost, Homeland Defense, Super Brittle, Energizer, Flying Fortress, and two Overclocks. We'll use the Ultra Boost to increase the attack speed for as many towers as possible, and then constantly use it on the VTSG, while the two Overclocks are used on the Temple and Adora. And we will sacrifice and rebuy the Trade Empire for Adora's Blood Sacrifice ability. And with that, our setup is complete. To fit all these towers and giving them all permabrew, you have to think a lot about the placement of your towers and the order in which you place and move them. In the 270s, I was feeling very doubtful that 300 would be possible. To push ahead, I had to micro everything. The MAD, the Ace Paragon ability, the Engineer's Laser Sentry, I sold and rebought the Grand Sabo and Homeland Defense at times to increase my uptime, and used all other abilities as best I could. Despite all this, round 297 could not be beaten. Even if I did all that and tried replacing and selling the engineer's mega sentries for the explosion damage, and also by changing the targeting to strong for some towers. But there was one way to beat it. By losing. By losing and paying 500 monkey money to continue, we can abuse the continue mechanic that resets your ability cooldowns. And with this, we managed to beat round 297 and sailed past round 300, eventually losing on round 303, at which point I chose not to continue. The challenge has been beaten and the devil defeated. For now.